Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if it is your first time here. My name is Jess, I upload videos once a week, mostly book related content with a little bit of lifestyle and travel thrown in as well for good measure and today I'm going to be sharing with you the books that I read in the month of October and you might be wondering why I'm sitting in a different location. Normally I have my uh, bookshelves behind me. If you follow me on Instagram then you will already know this so I apologise for the duplicate content um, but basically our nine month old rescue puppy Loki was hit by a car at the start of the week. He is fine other than a little bit of bruising um, but it has knocked his puppy confidence and as such he has taken to crying whenever he is left alone. Um, so rather than have a howling dog in the background of this video I thought that it was easier just to sit downstairs and so we will do this in a more chilled out grab yourself a hot drink let's have a chat about some of the books i read this month so i hope that that is okay and now if you are sitting comfortably um let's jump in and talk about the books that i read this month so the first book that i read was the bands of morning by brandon sanderson and this is a phrase that i feel like i'm going to use a lot uh, when talking about the books that i read this month um, but i have mixed feelings about this book basically um I enjoy Brandon Sanderson's writing, I enjoy pretty much everything that he puts out and for that reason I'm going to have enjoyed this book. This is the third one in a quartet and this quartet is a follow-on from his original Mistborn trilogy. Uh, the Mistborn trilogy's premise is kind of like the bad guy won and has been ruling for thousands of years and there is a magic system in this world where certain individuals are able to ingest metals and that in enhances their abilities and this quartet follows on from that and the reason that I have mixed feelings is because book one was um it didn't take itself too seriously it was almost like a comical twist on the original trilogy so we had this almost like wild west crime fighting duo who were a little bit hapless a little bit hopeless um and i laughed out loud so many times in the first book it was unbelievable and i just thought that it was such a clever spin-off idea by brandon sanderson and then as the books have gone on they've almost gone back to being more like the original Mistborn trilogy and that is fine as I said I really enjoy the way that Brandon Sanderson writes I think he is a really clever storyteller but I just miss that first book because I just thought that it was so interesting and clever and different um, and it didn't take itself too seriously whereas these ones are much more like the original trilogy um, and so it just gives me like a mixed feeling because whilst it's good I also missed the way that I thought it was going to go. Um, so obviously I can't tell you too much about this book because it's the third um, in a quartet. Um, but the first book kind of builds, as I said, it's set several hundred years later after the conclusion of the Mistborn trilogy. I don't think that you necessarily have to have read the Mistborn trilogy, but it does help because they do reference some of the characters um, and you could always just skim over that. It doesn't go into too much detail, but it would certainly spoil the Mistborn if you couldn't read these and then go back and read Mistborn, I don't think, because it would spoil the outcome of the trilogy. Um, so the, as I said, there is an interesting magical system in that you can ingest metals and this is predominantly about our main character who is called Wax and Wax is a lord in this world but he really doesn't want to be and instead of um, fulfilling his societal duties he goes out and solves crimes using his misborn abilities and that's all I'm really going to say. Um, there are various different um, things taking place, there's some political intrigue, um, obviously there's a very strong magical system, there is a bad guy who is um, trying to kind of undercut everything that Wax and his team are doing and it's just, it's a really good and really fun and really interesting book. Um, on the whole I enjoyed this book, um, I think I have said it multiple times now, I wish it was like the first ones, it's not but as I say Brandon Sanderson is just so so good um, that I will eat up anything that he writes so um, yes if you are a Sanderson fan or if you are interested in getting into some Brandon Sanderson then these are a series of books that I would definitely recommend. And then on to probably, well definitely not probably, my least favourite book of the month was The Mothers 
by Sarah J Norton. Um, I picked this up quite recently um, and I was after some pretty short, easy to read books. So I bought three um, and this was one of them. And I really didn't like this. I gave it two stars, I think, on Goodreads. It just, it wasn't for me. It's about a group of five women who meet at their NCT group. Um, and they are from all different walks of life, um, different social, economic groups. Um, they have, you know, some of them are married, some of them are not. Um, but they all meet at this NCT group, which is like a... Um, a prenatal group that you can go to and then a postnatal group and it tends to be that people um it's a legitimate thing in this country and it tends to be that people stay in touch because they've all had babies at the same time um, and at the very beginning of this book one of the women in this group her husband has gone missing um, so we're following the various different women as we try to uncover what has happened to the husband and we're also following the detective and her partner who are tasked with finding out what has happened and the basic idea is that we think the husband has run off he's been siphoning money from his company and he has done a run out and he has left his wife and his child and just run off but it becomes really obvious that that is not actually the case um as i say i have mixed feelings about this none of the women were likable and i think that that was meant to be quite deliberate but i just it meant that i've spent the whole time reading this book just feeling really like ugh because i just didn't like any of them and it made for a really um uncomfortable and um just disappointing read um and the other thing that i didn't like is that the detective in this book um is obsessed with a member of her team um who also happens to be a woman which doesn't matter um but she yeah she's like weirdly obsessed with her in but in a really negative way so she's constantly like oh i bet so and so um wouldn't even look at me because of this reason or oh i bet so and so is with that person and it was never in a positive way and yet um yeah it, it just it didn't i don't know what it was supposed to add to the story really it just gave this really negative overtop there was just a really negative thread running throughout the entire story that just left me feeling a bit um blurg and uncomfortable if blurg is a um, acceptable word to use in a review um yeah I, I mean there were some clever elements to it there were some interesting elements to it i liked that the author tried to pull from all different um as i said it's all different social economic standings and you know you probably wouldn't have said that this group of women would necessarily be friends or stay in touch um and obviously they do through this connection of having their children so she was i could see what she was trying to do but i just it just didn't gel with me at all um i read it to the end because i have a real hard time dnfing books and i wanted to know what the ultimate outcome was going to be um but yeah just just not one for me um, I didn't think there was a lot of suspense I didn't like any of the characters I thought that it was weird I thought that it was really negative um, and left me feeling a bit grotty and gross um, yeah so unfortunately a swing and a miss for me and then I went in a totally different direction and picked up The Colour of Magic by Terry Pratchett I didn't know when I bought this and I didn't know when I started reading it that it's actually a bind up of book one and book two of Terry Pratchett's Discworld books. Um, so it is actually The Colour of Magic, which is book one, and then the second book, which is The Light Fantastic. And this was so different <laughs> from anything that I'd read and anything that I was expecting to read. And um, one of the first things that I will say is there are no chapters in this book. And as a person who tends to read like, oh, I'll just sit down and read a chapter, or I'll just sit down and read half a chapter. Having no chapters in the book is really quite strange. And beyond that, you are jumping um, forwards and backwards and sideways in time, and it just is a real ride, um, that is for sure. Um, so, as I said, there are loads of different videos um, and advice and fun 
things um, on the order that you should read the Discworld books in. And I picked this one up because I am a stickler for doing things um, properly, I guess. Um, and I knew that The Colour of Magic was the first book in the Discworld series. So I picked it up because I wanted to read it in that order. And it does actually say, there was a note from Terry Pratchett at the beginning of this book, which does say that the best way to read the books is in the order that they were written. Um, now I know that there will be many fans who will disagree with that. And as I say, I've watched a number of videos from people recommending their best order to read the Discworld books in and saying that these aren't necessarily the best way to get into them but I just thought that I would give it a go and I really really enjoyed it. Again these are books which don't take themselves too seriously, it's sardonic and dry and sarcastic, um, it is just a really fun and enjoyable read. So in these two books we are following a failed wizard called Rince Wind who comes across a tourist, so someone from another part of the Discworld world um, who has arrived with a suitcase on legs um, and the suitcase is obviously some kind of sentient magical thing um, tends to eat people tends to um, produce things that you need and just follows this tourist um, who is called two flower around and rinse wind and two flowers worlds collide and they go off on this epic adventure and then there is also something kind of taking place in the background. We have the gods um, and we have fate and we have death who are kind of all involved up here on what is taking place on the ground. We have Rincewind continually um, escaping his fate and escaping death. We meet all kinds of different magical creatures. Um, as I say, they just go on this epic adventure to all different parts of the disc world. Um, and there is also this bigger thing bubbling, which is that the disc world is set on the back of a giant tortoise um, and the giant tortoise is swimming through space and he is heading towards some kind of destination that we don't really know and as the book progresses um, this feeling of impending peril and doom kind of builds and builds and that's all I really want to say about it. Um, it's a very complex idea I guess and it's a very complex setup. Uh, but the actual story it really doesn't matter so much about that. It's just very, very enjoyable. Um, my criticism of the book, I guess, would be that he repeats himself a lot. He tells you the same information over and over again. So he will tell you multiple times that the world is set on the back of a tortoise. And he will tell you multiple times that Rincewind is a failed wizard, but he has this spell that's kind of lodged itself in his head and they will tell you but it, it becomes quite repetitive obviously he's trying to get it to sink in the way that the world is set up and I get that and that's fine um, but by the end of the book I was like yes I know you've told me multiple times that this is the case um, so that would be my only criticism but they are super readable they are super enjoyable um, I definitely want to continue on with reading them. I want to get hold of the rest of the books um, in series one because I know that they're set into multiple different series. Um, yeah, I just thought that it was great. Um, really, really enjoyable and definitely what I needed to read. Um, I would, well, I suppose I said my only criticism, my, my only other criticism would be that it was a little bit difficult to connect with Rincewind as a character and it took me until the end of The Light Fantastic to really kind of get into it so that is actually none of The Colour of Magic and then well into the second book um, because you are jumping around so much and you kind of meet Rincewind and Two Flower in little snapshots of their adventure and then you see something or read something happening and then you jump forward into the next thing and so it takes a while to kind of build that connection and understand his story and for me character connection is huge so that would be my other criticism but on the whole thought they were great um very very pleased that I decided to read them and then I read my book club's choice for the month. If you don't know, I run a book club called Just One More Page Book Club. I will leave a link in the description box, which has all the information uh, regarding that. It's just a really fun and enjoyable community to be a part of. And we read something from a different genre every month. So for October, we picked uh, My Sister, The Serial Killer by Oyinkan Braithwaite. Sorry if I said that wrong. Um, this book, Oh my goodness. I said right at the beginning that I said I would sit on the fence or I had mixed feelings about many of the books that I read this month, but this one is definitely, uh, definitely fits the bill for that. So 
I'll start off by saying that I thought that this book was going to be really um, gory and graphic when I first started reading it and the fact that it wasn't was a huge relief to me um, and so <laughs> boosted my enjoyment of this book uh, tenfold because I yeah I'm just not very good with creepy gory books um I'm fine watching stuff like that um although I don't tend to watch horror but you know like someone being murdered or something I'm fine watching stuff like that uh, but reading it is a whole different ball game for me so the basic premise of this book is that we are following and again I'm really sorry I'm going to say the names the way that I read them it could be that I'm not pronouncing them correctly. Um, feel free to correct me in the comments um, so that future discussions of this book, I will get the names right. So we have Karidi and Karidi is a nurse in a Lagos hospital. And Karidi has a sister called Ayula and Ayula is a social media influencer and Ayula has a bit of a secret in that she keeps murdering her boyfriends. Uh, and Karidi is constantly called in to help Ayula clean up the scene of the crime, dispose of the body and then act like it never happened um, and so we meet Karidi as she has been called to the scene of the crime of Ayula's latest victim and up to this point it has been three people I think that she has killed um, and honestly I don't really want to say much more than that because I think it's it's such a short book it's super super readable and I think that it's best to just kind of go in and go on the journey. Now we've had the book club discussion for this and it was really, really interesting because the author is a little bit vague. She introduces a whole range of topics um, and she's a little bit vague about a lot of them. Um, and what the outcome was for many of the people in the book group is that we kind of filled in the blanks on our own and that meant that our reading experiences were vastly vastly different which made for such a fascinating discussion um, now I'm not normally one who likes to have um, questions at the end of a book and things left unanswered but it is a really clever way of the author writing this book that you are kind of left with these questions and you are left to connect the dots by yourself and everyone will kind of have a different experience the downside for me for that is that again I didn't really connect with the characters um, there wasn't enough time in between each chapter each chapter is incredibly short and is almost written in like a diary entry style um, and it didn't make for great connections with the characters and also again I feel like the author introduced a whole load of topics that I would have been really fascinated for her to expand on um, and to delve into a little bit deeper so she talks a little bit about police corruption in Lagos and I would have liked to have uncovered more about that um, she talks about um, the abusive childhood that Karidi and Eul have and I would have liked more detail about that and then there are just other different bits that I don't want to say because it'll spoil the story scattered through that I would have liked her to explore just that little bit more and I think it would have really rounded out my overall reading experience but honestly this is sharp, this is sassy, this is dark, this is humorous. Um, I rooted for Karidi all the way through. I thought she was fantastic. Um, didn't really like Ayula's character, but I liked the friction and I liked the relationship between the two sisters and how that was depicted and how different they were. And I liked that this was very much an exploration of um, the outside of us is not always a reflection of the inside of us and how we don't really know what people are like on the inside because from the outside you would have no idea what Karidi and Ayula get up to in their downtime. Um, so yeah definitely recommend it as I said it's sharp it's sassy it's dark several laugh out loud moments for me um, definitely enjoyed it I just yeah I wish the author had like doubled the size of the book and gone into much more detail because her writing style was very enjoyable and very readable as well and I would have liked that just so much more. I will definitely be looking out for more work by this author because I thought that her writing style was great. And then the final book that I read this month was Fingersmith by Sarah Waters and what a journey this book was. Um, let me put my drink down. Again, this is a book I have mixed feelings about. It's split into three parts and it just was not anything at all like I was expecting it to be. Um, there were several moments when my jaw just dropped. Um, it is atmospheric, it is dark, it is moving, but oh my goodness, it's just 
so far from the book that I thought that it was and that I was expecting to read that I just oh my goodness um so it's historical fiction it's set in the 1860s and part one is exactly the book that it says on the back so we have an orphan called Sue Trinder who has been brought up in a house of um petty thieves basically in a part of London called the borough um and one of the family's associates basically comes to them and he says um I've got this um bit going where I've come across this young woman who is living out in the countryside with her uncle and she is heiress to this huge fortune but she has to get married um, in order to access her fortune and I am kind of ingratiating myself with the family um, they are very naive they're very secluded and isolated and this niece has never really been exposed to anything so she's a little bit simple so this concept is that he will take um, Sue our orphan to be this niece's maid um, and then the two of them will work together to convince her to marry this gentleman um, and then they will get the fortune um, and that's kind of part one and that's what it says on the back but <laughs> and I can't really say much more because I will spoil it but I just um, by the time you get to the end of part one the whole story just then gets flipped on its head then it gets flipped back again and then you go like around the house and then you come back and I'm just like oh my goodness me so and then you get to part three and this is not really a spoiler because um, it's kind of an undercurrent that runs through the whole story that one of these girls we have sue who is the criminal orphan and we have maud who is the niece who also happens to be an orphan um their mother died in a madhouse and so this kind of concept of madhouse and women being in madhouses runs all the way through and at the start of part three we get to experience someone in a woman in a madhouse and by the time I got to part three my nerves were already a little bit fraught from the rest of the reading experience but the this concept of women just being signed over into madhouses by relatives husbands brothers families and just left there and the treatment that they got and and the fact that they were they were just trapped um and they could be put into these madhouses for nothing more than i mean i, I looked up um some of the admissions into um these asylums around this time and it would be things like novel reading novel reading like books like reading books and that is actually something that is referenced in here one of the doctors is talking to one of the inmates and he says um you have been encouraged to overindulge yourself in literature and have inflamed your organs of fancy you have read too much so like how can that be a reason um and then also there were just things like an over interest in politics um and i think as well um you know mental health so postnatal depression or just depression or anxiety um anything like that and you could just be locked away and and you would just be trapped and i couldn't get i couldn't get past that to then enjoy the rest of the story because i felt trapped and i could feel this tightness about me and this sense of frustration that this was the story for so many women and they couldn't do anything about it and how horrendous that was and then the treatment and the cures that they tried to I'm doing this an awful lot but the cures that they tried to um you know instill in these women and I just could it was just horrible it was horrible and it was horrible reading about it and it made me uncomfortable and it detracted from the rest of the story even though it formed a big part of the final part of the story um it just it was just horrendous um so there was that um there is also a sapphic romance in this which again i didn't realize which is fine um doesn't really form a huge part of the story it kind of is is underneath and it drives a lot of what happens um but it's not too overt if that's not your kind of thing um it was fine for me um but so much happens in this book i can't even formulate my thoughts on it really it's just like bang 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 um and as i say everything kind of gets turned upside down and then turned back and then goes this way and that way it's very atmospheric it was my first sarah waters book i thought that her writing was great she does have a few um kind of foibles i guess as an author um she likes the phrase um like so many like so many somethings like so many somethings as a way of describing which i did notice and by the end i was like oh we're using that phrase again uh, but yeah on the whole i really enjoyed it it just was and as i say it was an absolute journey 
and I went into it it having been recommended to me and I went into it just like totally blind reading the first part of the book and actually by the time I got to the middle of part one I was thinking to myself there's a whole lot of book left to say that the general concept of the story is being concluded now what on earth could the rest of the book be about and if I could only go back and say to past Jess if only you'd known what was <laughs> what was coming in the rest of this book if only you'd had the foresight um absolute journey absolute ride really enjoyed it though but just um was totally blindsided by the whole experience um but yeah, I think I gave it four stars on Goodreads. I actually can't remember. I think I finished it in a total state of like shell shock. Like, oh my goodness, what have I just read? Um, yeah, thoroughly enjoyable. And I'll definitely be looking for some more Sarah Waters books off the back of this. So there you go. They are the books that I read in the month of October. I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope you don't mind me being in a slightly different setting. Um, tried to make it as relaxing as, and cosy as possible. I um, hope that you enjoyed it. Let me know what your favourite book in the month of October was. I always love to know. Let me know if you've read any of the ones that I've talked about today and what you thought. I um, always love to continue our bookish chat in the comments. Um, as always, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to give me the thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you aren't already. I hope that you are all staying safe. Take care and I will see you soon.